Hi, welcome to everyone and myself Nirdosh Kumar Rajput and today we will discuss the nature of the roots. So, in this lecture we will learn nature of the roots of a quadratic equation. So, we know that the general form of the quadratic equation is ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 where a comma b comma c belonging to real number and a is not equal to 0. So, in this lecture we will learn how to find out the nature of the roots of this quadratic equation. Okay. So, we know that we know that the roots of this equation is x equal to minus b plus minus root under b square minus 4ac divided by 2. Where a is the coefficient of x square, b is the coefficient of x and c is the coefficient, c is the constant term of this equation. Okay. So, for finding of the nature of the roots, what is the x here? x is the roots of this and has the value minus b plus minus root under b square minus 4ac divided by 2. Okay. So, we have to find out the nature of this value. Means, we have to find out the nature of the root. So, these values are alpha comma beta. We know earlier alpha comma beta. So, we have to find out the nature of the roots means we have to find out the nature of alpha comma beta. Okay. So, for finding, for finding out the nature of the roots, one term is defined called, called discriminant. Discriminant discriminant and it is denoted by d and d is equal to b square minus 4 times ac so we are denoted what is the a and b and c so this term called for discriminant and denoted by d so for finding out the nature of the roots, first of all, we have to find out the value of b square minus 4ac means d. Here we know that a comma b comma c are real number. So if we find out b square minus 4ac, then also we get a, a real number. So by using the sign of the d, we can or conclude the nature of the root. So one by one, we will discuss. Okay, fine. So, remember this value d equal to b square minus 4ac. It is the important value. So, it is uh, it is the important value and it is very useful to find out the nature of the roots. So, it, it have to be remembered. So, there are or three conditions on b. First is either d can be greater than 0. Fine. Second is b can be equal to 0 and a third is b is less than 0. Fine. So, there are the three conditions. <coughs> First is d is greater than 0. Second is d equal to 0. And third one is d is less than 0. So, it is the a three condition on any number. Because of that, if or there is any number let a so it can be greater than 0 it can be equal to 0 it can be less than 0 okay fine or similarly d is also a number so it can be greater than 0 it can be equal to 0 it can be less than 0 okay fine so we will discuss one by one first one is d is greater than equal to 0 means b square minus 4ac is greater than greater than 0 okay fine so we know that roots of this equation roots of the quadratic equation equal to alpha comma beta equal to minus b plus minus root under b square minus 4ac divided by 2 okay so if b square minus 4ac is greater than 0 Okay, then if we take the root under b square minus 4ac, 
then we get a a real number a real number a real number it may be rational or irrational so if we take the root of b square minus 4ac then we get a real number so it will be a real number it will be a real number okay fine so alpha comma beta equal to minus b plus minus a real number divided by 2 well let's root under b square minus 4ac or denoted by a dx suppose a dx is a number it is the value of root under b square minus 4ac then alpha comma beta we get minus b plus minus a dash divided by 2a so alpha equal to minus b plus a dash divided by 2a and beta equal to minus b minus a dash divided by 2a and here a is the real number b is a real number and a dash also is a real number so from here we can see that if b square minus 4ac is greater than 0 then we get the two different value two different value of alpha comma beta and b get a real value because of that b is a real a dash is, re a dash is also real and a is also real if we add the two real number then we get also real number and if we divide by a real number then also we get a real number then these number is also a real number okay fine and this number is also a real number so from here we can conclude that if b square minus 4ac is greater than 0 then we get the different value different value of alpha comma beta and real real value of alpha comma beta so <coughs> make a conclusion if b is greater than 0 means b square minus 4ac is greater than 0 then then roots of the quadratic equation of the quadratic equation the quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c is get equal to 0 <coughs> are real and unequal and unequal roots also called distinct distinct root roots okay so if b square minus 4ac is greater than 0 means discriminant is greater than 0 then the roots of this quadratic equation x square plus bx plus c are real and unequal because of that from here we can see that okay this is the first condition okay if <coughs> this is the second condition if b is equal to 0 means b square minus 4ac equal to 0 and we know that alpha comma beta equal to minus times b plus minus root under b square minus 4ac divided by 2 okay so if b square minus 4ac equal to 0 if we put b square minus 4ac equal to 0 then this term becomes equal to 0 so alpha comma beta equal to minus b plus minus 0 divided by 2a means alpha comma beta equal to minus b by 2a okay so from here we can see that alpha comma beta equal to minus b by a where a comma b belonging to real number so minus b divided by 2a also a real number also a real number okay fine so here from here we can see that alpha comma beta equal to minus b by 2a means alpha comma beta has equal value and also has real value so from here we can make a make a conclusion so if b square minus 4 is equal to 0 then then roots roots of the quadratic
क्वाड्रेटिक इक्वेशन एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस बी एक्स प्लस सी इक्वल टू जीरो आर रियल एंड इक्वल ओके फाइन सो डी विल डिस्कस द थर्ड कंडीशन इफ डी इज लेस देन जीरो फाइन सो इट इज अ थर्ड कंडीशन इफ b is less than zero. So we can say that b square minus four ac is less than zero. So we know that alpha comma beta minus b plus minus root under b square minus four ac divided by two way. Okay, fine. So if b square minus four ac, b square minus four ac is less than zero. Means it will less than zero. Means means it will be a negative value. Okay, fine. So if we take the root of b square minus four ac, this is this is or less than zero. Then if we take the roots of any negative number, roots of any negative number, then it will become a imaginary number. It will become a imaginary number. So here b square minus four ac also a negative number. So we take a root of b square minus four ac, then we get then we get an imaginary imaginary number. Okay, fine. So here b square minus four ac a imaginary number. So we can make a or conclusion. Then we get minus b. Plus minus one an imaginary number. Plus minus two. So ultimately, b is a real number, a is a real number. If we add a real number in, in if we add a real number with the imaginary imaginary number, then we get an imaginary number. So these whole number is becomes equal to imaginary number. Okay. If we divide by two eight, a is a real number. Then if we divide by two a, then it will also become whole number is also a imaginary number. Okay, so we can say that if b square minus four ac is less than zero, means discriminant discriminant is less than zero, then alpha comma beta are imaginary number. Okay, so fine. Based on this, we can make a a conclusion, and conclusion is that if D is less than zero. Then roots of roots of quadratic quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c equal to zero r imaginary r Imaginary. Okay, fine. So <coughs> there are a four condition. So fourth one is if if d is greater than and equal to zero means b square minus four ac is greater than and equal to zero. Fine. Okay. So from here we get the for two condition. One is d is greater than sorry d is greater than zero. Fine. Okay. Another is d is equal to zero. Okay. If we take the intersection of these two values, then we get d is greater than and equal to zero. So we know that if d is greater than zero, then we get the roots of the equation are real and unequal. Okay, and from here, if d is equal to zero, means b square minus four ac equal to zero, then we get the roots of the equation are real and equal. So we make a or conclusion over that. So <coughs> it has real and unequal.
इट हैज रियल एंड इक्वल If we take the intersection of these two value, then we get if d is greater than equal to zero means b square minus four ac is greater than equal to zero. Then we make a or conclusion roots are roots are take a common value. Here is the real also common. And if d is greater than equal to zero, then we get a real common. If d is d is equal to zero, then also get a real common. So roots are real. So finally, we make a or conclusion: if d is greater than zero, means b square minus four ac is greater than equal to zero, then we get the roots of the quadratic equation ax square, ax square plus dx plus c equal to zero are real. Fine. Okay, so so fifth condition. Okay, if d is greater than zero, d is or greater than zero, and and d is a perfect square number. D is a perfect Perfect square number. Perfect square number. Okay. So, what is perfect square number? Okay. Means if we take a root of a number and we get an integer called a perfect square number. Example, such as twenty five. Because of that. If we take the root of the twenty-five, then we get five, and five is a integer, so it is a perfect square number. Similarly, four, one, and sixteen, ah, sixty-four, it is okay. So, if d is a perfect square number, then, then. We know that alpha comma beta equal to minus b plus minus root under b square minus four ac divided by two a. Okay. So if b square minus four ac means equal to d, it is not. It is a. It is b square minus four ac equal to d. If d is a perfect square number, then we if we take if we take the root. Of a perfect square number, then we get an integer. So integer also a rational number. Integer also a rational number. What do you mean by the rational number? Those number which can be expressed by in this form p by q. So let example if five is the real integer number and also it is expressed in in term five by one equal to five. So it is five five is a integer number and it is Denoted by in this form p by q, so it is i is also a rational number. Fine. So from here, if we take the roots of a perfect square number, then we get an integer number. Either we can say that we get a rational number. So it will become a rational number. It will become a rational number. Okay. So b is a real number. Is also real number. If we add a real number and, and also it is a integer and divide by also a real number, then alpha comma beta becomes becomes equal to a rational number. A rational number. Okay, fine. So from here we can make a conclusion. If d is a, d is greater than zero. And d is a perfect square number. Then, then the roots, then the roots of the quadratic, of the quadratic equation, equation a x square plus b x plus c equal to zero are Rational, are rational. Fine. So these are the four or condition 
which is depend on the sign of the discriminant of the quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0. So, <coughs> we make a chart. Hmm? We make a chart which is useful to remember the nature of the rules. So, here first condition is that if d is greater than 0, then here nature of rules nature of rules okay fine so <clears throat> if d is a, if then it is the first condition d is greater than 0 then nature of rules then roots are real and unequal roots are real and unequal fine second condition is that d is greater than equal to 0 then roots are real and equal fine ok third condition if d is less than 0 then roots are roots are imaginary number sorry imaginary number ok fine ok fourth condition if d is greater than and equal to 0 then roots are real fine five fifth condition if d is a perfect square d is a perfect perfect square then then roots are roots are rational roots are rational number fine so in this lecture by the using the sign of the discriminant of the quadratic equation of any quadratic equation we can know that we can easily know that the nature of the roots fine so thank you to everyone for watching this lecture so in the next lecture we will discuss the several or several problem different problem based upon the nature of the roots so thank you to everyone and please come to the next lecture for solving the different questions based upon the nature of the roots thank you to everyone